Welcome to Cake Week! Today I'm going to attempt a signature bake. Usually signature bakes are sort of the tried and true recipes that you've, uh, you make all the time for family and friends. Um, given that I don't bake enough, I don't have a lot of tried and true recipes. Um, so I am modifying a recipe in a cookbook and we'll see how it com comes out. The uh, signature bake for this week is a family sized fruit sponge cake. So it can be any type of sponged fruit, but it must be fresh fruit, not dried fruit. And I have two hours to do it in. So what I'm gonna make this week is a pistachio sponge with fresh pear inside. And um, I'm gonna swirl what was gonna be cranberry sauce through the top of it, but I cannot find cranberries at the minute in Northern Ireland, so I'm gonna have to improvise and either not do it at all or maybe do some sort of berry um, swirl thing instead. So here we go, let's see how we get on. Start my timer. Sounds like ample time. Here we go. That would be bad if it actually hadn't started the counting down. Oh, that's so sticky and gross. Why is that so disgusting? The first two things I'm going to focus on are getting the nuts and the swirl topping ready. So, because I can't put it in the oven without those being in it anyway. So I'm going to roast the pistachios because um, I want to bring out their flavor a bit more than, than they are in the package. These are not pre-roasted, plus I'm going to be chopping them down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chop them into smaller chunks roast them for about six to eight minutes, let them cool off, and then uh, give them a little <laughs> and the wee blitzer thing uh, to get them down to like a fine, fine grain. Because um, I want it to be, I want it to be like part of the batter as opposed to big chunks that you encounter when you're biting in. And then um, I'll have a go at the berry swirl. I've got some frozen mixed summer fruits in the freezer. And I'll try following my regular cranberry sauce recipe uh, using those. And if that fails, I have a, um, a jar of tinned or jarred cranberry sauce ocean spray. Don't know if that's allowed in signature break bakes, bringing pre-made stuff, but it is what it is. My thinking on roughly chopping the pistachios before I roast them is that it'll increase the surface area that gets roasted, which should mean more of that kind of nice nutty flavor. I'm also going to keep one unroasted one back. That way I have a comparison to see how toasted they're getting, you know, untoasted, take a wee nibble versus, you know, at six minutes or eight minutes uh, coming out of the, of the thing, out of the oven. getting quite noisy in here because I have the extractor fan going and the oven and it's a small kitchen so sorry if you can't hear me great. Um, while my nuts, <laughs> while my nuts roast uh, and I wait for the fruit to kind of jam up, um, I'm going to make cake flour. So my recipe calls for cake flour which is apparently very common in the US but it's not sold in the UK. Um, it's just a lighter flour 
um, with a little bit less protein in, a, in it, I think is what it is. Uh, no expert here, but there's a wee hack where you can take some of the flour out and replace it with corn, um, corn flour, corn starch. So I'm gonna do that now, and it also requires a bit of sifting to get it really light. So I'll do that now while the nuts are roasting and the, um, the cranberry berry thing is doing its thing. So for every cup of plain flour you put in, There's two cups of plain flour. You take out two tablespoons. nuts are out and cooling and my jam is off the boil or the sauce or whatever is off the boil um, and hopefully thickening uh, and I just realized everything was supposed to be at room temperature uh, and I got everything except for the yogurt um, so the recipe calls for buttermilk but because I'm using pistachios I thought that's a little bit more kind of uh, Middle Eastern Turkish uh, so I'm swapping out the buttermilk with yogurt I don't know why, I just took a notion. Um, so that is gonna kind of cool or warm up to room temperature, hopefully in the next few minutes. Um, and I also just realized that I forgot to prep the pears. Um, so keeping to this timeline is pretty tricky. I'm down to an hour and 13 minutes and I need about 45 to 50 minutes for this bake. So I basically have about 25 minutes left to get all this stuff done. Um, so trickier than one would think, multitasking like this. I thought I was good at multitasking. Maybe not so much when you're doing something for the first time. But anyway, so I'm gonna let this sit and warm up. Actually, I'm gonna stick it over by the warm stuff. Hopefully that'll help. And I'm going to peel and shred, or rather grate, some pears, a cup worth of pears and squeeze them out, um, the juices out of all the paper towel and stuff just to try to limit the amount of juice that it gives off in the in the batter so it doesn't make it super bleh, wet and loopy. Um, and then I'll get on to the actual cake part. You just missed me making a massive mess. Turn the mess around. Okay. So I'm using uh, commas, I think they're called, pears out of Belgium, France, and a French breed because I heard that it's less grainy. It's a less grainy texture than the like, conference pears, which you get here pretty readily. And I couldn't find any of the um, Anjou pears, which is what I would use if I were making uh, a pie. Uh, Thanksgiving time, I usually make a pear, apple, and cranberry pie, and I use the, um, the really tapered kind of brown. I think they're on shoe pears. Big shred, a big grate. I thought about doing a, like a half and half mixture of shredded and cubed, but I think I've lost my nerve. 
be honest. I suppose if you're eating a cake, you're generally not expecting to bite into big pieces of fruit like you would a pie, so. I should be doing this the other way, shouldn't I? one cup's worth. A lot of like, more hair than I need. Hey, how's that for visual spatial awareness? That is like pretty much spot on a cup. Great. much for a paper towel, he thinks. So I am going to use a real towel instead. Fresh out of the drawer. Not room temperature. Okay, now it's time for the batter, and I have one hour and five minutes. Alright, so first step is to measure out one and a half cups of the cake flour in one bowl, and then in a separate bowl, two thirds cup of the yogurt, the baking soda, and the vanilla. In this, I'll be creaming up the butter with some sugar and some egg yolks, and then alternately adding the flour mixture and the uh, yogurt mixture. Hmm, where's my other spatula? So the other camera has died there, but you, that's a lot better looking. That before it was really grainy. Um, it hadn't really creamed up the butter, but I think that looks like batter. All right, I've only got one bowl, and the next step is to do the egg whites. I need to get myself a second one of these. So I'm going to transfer this to the mixing bowl, the glass mixing bowl. Give this a really, really good clean to get all the fat out of it, and then do up the egg whites. But not before I add my nuts and my pears, which I almost forgot to do. Butter. 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 Where'd the butter go? I didn't put it back in the fridge. thought I'd gone crazy. It says beat until stiff but not dry. Um, so those look stiff and they're shiny and they're not gritty with sugar. So I'm gonna call that beaten. 
So the recipe says that I'm supposed to fill two round eight inch pans that are two inches deep, but obviously mine's a lot deeper than that. Uh, and I think I've already used more than half of the dough, which is probably gonna throw the timing off. But I'm gonna stop there, add the little um, jam through the top, and then chuck it in and probably have to play the timings by ear a little bit. It's in the oven, it says it needs 30 to 35 minutes for the normal depth. I'm sitting on 16, so I'm gonna be over. But um, first attempt, and yeah, it is what it is, so we'll see how it tastes. Right, so it's done. It's a bit dark. The berry stuff did not stay on the top. It made a pattern, but it didn't stay on the top. It wasn't thick enough. And newsflash, I screwed up the cake flour because when I told you I was measuring out a cup, I actually had the half cup in my hand. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot less flour in this thing than it's supposed to have by about half. Um, which maybe it'll mean it's super light because it's just full of whipped meringue. Um, we shall see, but it rose for sure it climbed the heck out of that tin so I'm gonna let it um, I'm gonna let it cool and then cut it and see see what's inside it's cooled mostly I can't wait any longer so I'm gonna cut it and see what the damage is oh <laughs> well I'm not really sure what to make of that it <laughs> Can you see that? Uh, I mean, technically it's, it is it is cooked through, I think, but it is very wet in the middle, like very, very wet in the middle. Not in a fall apart sort of way, but in it, let me see if I can move the camera here. See that line there? Everything below that cross line is really, really dense. Oh, no. <laughs> mm. All right, so. <laughs> I was trying not to laugh. Um, Flavor wise, it's nice. <laughs> Probably could have done with that missing flower. Um, it's almost got the consistency more of maybe like a steamed pudding. So it's odd. I'd really, I, I wouldn't say it's a success. It's edible, it doesn't taste bad, but yeah, that center bit is confusing for sure. And it got so dark so fast in the oven that you're like, wow, it must be cooked already. Um, so again, I don't know if that was the lack of the flour or the fact that it was in a really dark pan, which I only heard after I, only read after I purchased that, that um, darker pans draw more heat, which affects cooking time, but um yeah i wish i could i wish you could really see this up close so that's that's kind of what we're looking at um 
cooked across the top and then not raw in the center but just very uh unusual consistency that's the only way i can describe it and then let's see mm. I haven't cut a big enough slice out. Oh, burning. You can kind of see the same issue here. Not to mention that it's just dark as all. Um, probably not a successful bake, <laughs> but a learning opportunity. So I guess Stay tuned for the next one and see what else I screw up.